yesterday we have fully charged both batteries from solar for the very first time and I wanted to do some testing with the BMSs but I realized I've got no load connected the inverter here is still mounted on the on the Powerwall 2.2 but it's not connected to the Victron link system on the Powerwall 2.1 okay let's connect the inverter I hope you don't mind the air condition running in here but it is 150 amps outside. Welcome to the off-grid garage in sunny hot Australia. It is sunny hot guys. The pool got a good use for the last couple of days and because this is just a three kilowatt inverter so 3000 divided by 50 is around 60 amps so I'm perfectly happy to utilize our offcuts of the 16 millimeter cable. I've got some ring lugs already here. These are 6mm for the inverter and 8mm for the Victron Peter. Okay, I have used the 16mm dies here for the hydraulic crimper, but I'm not 100% satisfied with the crimp result. It looks very weak. So I'm replacing these ones with a 10mm. And then we just crimp again. Yeah, that looks much better. So I've got now the six millimeter ring lock on each of the ends and we've got this loop it's a bit louder here because of the air condition but much nicer okay so we reconnect the positive negative here on the terminals and then pull up this cable through the duct up here to the links what the heck to the links peter So and here inside the Peter, um, it doesn't really matter where you connect it. Victron recommends to alternate solar charge controller inverter, solar charge controller inverter. Uh, I don't, I don't think it makes any difference at all. This is a 1000 amp bus bar. You know, I would say it makes no difference at all. Just connect it wherever you want, where it's convenient. Done. Just making sure it's the right orientation otherwise we have to twist the cable then okay yeah. I usually use the heavy TUD ring locks here with a bell mouth it's far easier to insert the cables then than in the usual ones and the material on these eBay ones here is far thinner than on these heavy duty ones I usually buy but I haven't got any in 16 millimeters and for this small inverter these ones are fine it's always a bit tricky to get all these cables into this ring lock but it can be done no one left behind so we are going for 14 there are 14 newton meters again and starting with a negative underneath this cover can you actually see anything here <laughs> amazing okay 14 this one just came off no big deal, just clips in. 
Right, so this is isolating our negative and now with a positive and in this case I'm going with another 50 amp fuse because 100 amps is a bit too large for a 16 millimeter cable and I don't have a 60 amp or a 70 amp or something fuse so we take the 50 amp for now but now it comes we also have to be aware that we will get a spark as soon as we connect our fuse to the bus bar system because it will charge the capacitors of our inverter and that's why we have to use this um, ceramic resistor here 22 ohms it is 5 watts link is down below and we use this one to pre-charge the capacitors of the inverter first of all So just as an alternative method to pre-charge the capacitors of your inverter, you can also use a adjustable power supply, set this one to zero volts and connect the positive negative to the terminals of your inverter and then change the voltage to the rated voltage of your inverter, so in our case 48 volts, something around 40 to 60 volts and this will then slowly pre-charge the capacitors. So don't set the voltage first and then connect the cables because then you will get a spark as well so turn this one down to zero wait until it's zero volts and then connect to the inverter and then turn it up to 12 24 or 48 volts to pre-charge you can take the crocodile cables off then and your capacitors are pre-charged and you can safely connect the cables then to your battery without getting a spark so that's an alternative method if you don't have one of these resistors Okay, so we will set our 50 amp fuse, making sure it's flat on the bus bar up here and sitting directly on the nut down here. So and if I would connect my cable of the inverter now to this positive here, we will get a spark. So what I'm going to do is now take the resistor on one end and on the other end we connect to our inverter and let the capacitors pre-charge just for two or three seconds and then we can connect the cable no spark no problem even if you have to take the cable out now again for a couple of seconds and reconnect it there will be no spark the capacitors will stay charged unless your inverter is not turned off because then the inverter will consume all the charge of the capacitors already all right so we are now officially hooked up I'll just um, as a quick test before we tighten the nuts I'll just turn on the inverter here yep we've got the light we've got voltage all good and a beep okay I'll just close the Peter again and we've got the second light turned off now because we've got two fuses installed power and the other two fuses are not installed so one light less in the off-grid garage discotheque. You should see this by night here. It is incredible how many LEDs this whole system has. Unbelievable. Okay, so all, everything is installed. And now, well, I don't like they don't have any insulation covers here for these terminals here so I probably take the cables off again at some stage and put some heat shrink on top of it or just some electrical tape just to have these uh, terminals here covered because this is our positive and there's a negative underneath I don't like to have them open like this so usually good inverters like the PETA like the, um, the PETA inverter they come with these covers here these plastic covers yeah to cover the terminals and that just clips on and then everything is insulated and covered far better far better the Xia inverter doesn't come with these covers so you have to make your own I was just wondering what is going on I just started the um, SPED calibration center VRM on Victron and I could see the ESS hashtag 4 and it says down here BMS disabled discharge that is pretty cool that the BMS actually reports this and the VRM shows what's going on 
Nice one, Zeplos. Nice. So we can now turn on our inverter. We've got 55.67 volts on the battery and 233 here on the output. Okay, I would suggest um, we're plugging something in. Maybe, maybe the air condition there because it's like 120 amps inside here. <laughs> oh shit, I'm leaking. Just a bit south of Australia. <sighs> Okay, let's start with this fan first and make sure everything is working. Okay, that is on. Yeah, we can see in the VIM immediately 60 watts, our fan 72 watts. And we can also see this here on the battery, negative 0.7, negative 0.7 we are pulling from each of the batteries. To power my fan and it feels so good okay let's get something stronger okay air condition is plugged in let's turn it on and watch the vim so 33 watts is obviously the standby power of the inverter which is a lot let me just turn it off for a second and see yeah now it goes to zero but this was including the air condition standby as well all right i could hear beep it's ready Turn it on. Ooh, it's running our aircon. Nice. Discharging 1.1 kilowatt, 1.3, 1.5. Around 1.5 kilowatts we are pulling through our inverter from our Zeppelin batteries now. Nice. Yeah, that feels good. Oh, what's this humming? Is there something vibrating? And we have now, I don't know, one of the fans. Oh, okay, it's going away now. It's probably too hot for them. But yeah, we can see uh, we are pulling 1.6 kilowatts from the inverter now from our battery and the solar charge controller has not kicked in yet. And this is something the Zeppelin batteries do. Um, up down to 96% state of charge and then and only then they allow charging the batteries again so we have to go under so we have to go under 96% now which could take a while we are at 100% so let's leave it running for a while anyway guys I think this concludes almost the building of our power wall 2.1 and 2.2 down there everything is now connected and we can really start using the power wall now including the batteries do more testing with the Zeppelin systems and eventually connect more loads to this power wall as well Ooh, it says two kilowatts now that's a lot of watts wow we have 16 amps from the top battery and 21 amps from the bottom battery because this one has double the capacity of this one so this all works fine so far. So if you have an infrared camera, it's always good to check your work with this camera. So we're having a look at the backside of the inverter here. We can see uh, cable temperatures of 30, 35, 36 degrees. Totally fine. I'll just touch it with my hands here as well. Yeah. There's nothing hot. And also here on the, the Victron Lynx Peter, you can see on the left the uh, fuse temperature of 42 degrees. So the ambient temperature is already at around 37 inside here. And the cable down here is maybe heating up because of the fuse. All right, all good. Anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here on the channel. Really appreciate everything you are doing. And I hope you enjoyed this basic video today, just connecting the inverter to our battery and power wall and Lynx Peter. Just a very basic video this afternoon here from hot, sweaty and loud Australia. Until the next video, guys, you please stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Oh, it's nice. Here's the cold air coming through now. <sighs> See you then. Bye bye. It's good. I like it. 
Wait, 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 before you go. Well, you always have to wait until the end of the video. There's always more coming. So, let me, um, let me show you here. So in the, in the VRM, we can see now what is coming in from the solar charge controller into the battery. But as you can see, there's a difference, right? 540 watts from the solar and only 400 watts going into the battery. So where's the rest going? Exactly, before we didn't have the solar charger on and everything which was coming out of the battery was going into our inverter to run the air condition. But now because the charger has kicked back in, well, we don't know exactly how much load we have on the inverter side, right? There's a trick. Go in your remote console, go into settings, go into your system setup and turn on has DC system. See this toggle switch? And then watch the VRM. There, there it is. There's our DC power coming in. So this function has DC power, needs to be turned on, should be turned on whenever you have something connected which is not Victron. Either a load or a generator. Any wind generator, any power charger, any other inverter like the Xia inverter or if you have a a Renegy or another Peter running on your system. Everything which is not connected via the Victron system, via VE Direct or VE Can, VE Bus, to your Raspberry Pi or to your Server GX, you should turn on has DC system. Because now the Victron system calculates what is actually going into your DC load or coming from your charger if you have one. So it basically calculates the difference between what is coming in from the charger and what is going into the battery and the difference then must be some kind of load. So for example if I turn on my power supply and charge this battery now you can see here 21 amps going into the battery and we should see exactly this here in the VRM as well it takes a moment to update and we should see the 20 amps minus the fan which is running as well going into the battery. So in this case it is charging the battery and when I turn on the charger you can see the little animation going the other way. The battery is delivering power to your inverter or other load whatever you have. This feature is not 100% accurate because it only takes the difference between what the solar charge controller reports and what the shunt reports, so our BMSs. Yeah, here for example, I have just turned off the inverter and the power supply, so there's no nothing connected other than the charger and the battery, and it still shows some kind of 30 watts going into something. This is just a calculation of these two values, and depending how accurate these two are measuring, you will have a more or less accurate result for your DC power. But it is not too bad, and certainly better than nothing. Okay, that's all I have today. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.